Thank you, Senator Xenophon. Senator Hume. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise to speak um, for the Coalition on, on uh, the Excise Tariff Amendment Tobacco Bill of 2016 and the Customs Tariff Amendment Tobacco Bill 2016. The Coalition is particularly proud of these bills. They will increase tobacco excise charged on domestic production and equivalent customs duties charged on imports by way of four annual increases of 12.5 per cent a year from 2017 to 2020. And these increases will replicate the annual increases that were put in place uh, by the former government and, uh, and continued by this government um, from 2013 through to 2016. In addition, uh, adult average weekly ordinary times earnings-based indexation uh, of tobacco excise rates will continue. And the next biannual indexation of tobacco excise will occur on the 1st of March 2017. So from the 1st of September this year, the excise and excise equivalent duty rates on tobacco is now $0.61 or uh, 61 cents, just over 61 cents per stick and $763.20 per kilogram of tobacco content, which equates to $15.26 in excise on a packet of 25 cigarettes, which retails currently for approximately $25. So ignoring uh, biannual indexation, the 12.5 per cent increase will increase excess per packet of 25 cigarettes by around $2 each year. And this means that after the final increase in 2020, the excise component of a packet of 25 cigarettes will be around $21.50. The increase in excise and duty will move Australia towards the World, the World Health Organization's recommendation that excise should comprise around 70 per cent of, of the price of a cigarette. Uh, the precise impact on price, however, is uncertain because tobacco companies themselves might alter their prices beyond that excise change, and that is something which is out of our control. Mr. President, a number of speakers have already mentioned that each year smoking kills an estimated 15,000 Australians and costs Australia about $31.5 billion in, uh, in social costs, including, including health costs. Um, and this bill particularly aims to reduce the prevalence of smoking in Australia and, and therefore minimise the harm of cigarette smoking to the community. This government, the Turnbull government, is greatly concerned about the serious health risks of smoking and it has continued the efforts of previous governments to support and build on Australia's great success in, in tobacco control. Just to give you an idea of the brief history of tobacco control in Australia, in 1997, uh, uh, the government implemented na a national tobacco campaign. In, uh, in 2006, that was when, first of all, graphic health warnings on most tobacco packaging was introduced, and they still scare the bejesus out of most people on a daily basis. Some of those pictures are just terrifying. Um, in 2010, uh, 25 of tobacco, there was a 25 per cent tobacco excise increase, and in 2011, tobacco plain packaging, the pl tobacco plain packaging bill became law. There was some controversy there, but, um, but we do believe that that certainly has had an impact. In 2012, all tobacco products sold in Australia required to be in plain packaging and with updated and expanded health warnings. Uh, and then in 2013, we started seeing those, uh, those, those stepped tobacco excise increases. The first two uh, was 12.5% in 2013, another 12.5% in 2014, another in 2015, another 12.5%. In, in 2016, a PIR published on the OBPR website on the 26th of February findings that, that tobacco plain packaging had begun to achieve its objectives. Uh, in 2016, just very, very recently, that last 12.5 per cent 
excise increase um, uh, uh, kicked in. So the excise increases announced in the 2015-2016 budget, um, budget are firmly based on the evidence that this will further help reduce smoking rates in Australia. The increasing the, um, increasing the prices of tobacco products through taxes is, is widely recognised as an effective and cost-effective tobacco control uh, intervention um, for reducing tobacco use, and particularly among youth and people from lower socio-economic groups, those disadvantaged communities where smoking is most prevalent. Increased prices may cause some financial stress. That is understood. However, we do believe that this is offset in Australia by the provision of accessible and affordable cessation treatment, something that uh, Senator Xenophon was recently speaking about, um, uh, both in services and in, in therapies. In Australia, uh, the 2010 Post-Implementation Review PIR, conducted by the Treasury um, estimated that there had been, um, um, of the 25 per cent tobacco excise increase, it estimated that 11, there was an 11 per cent decrease in tobacco consumption, and that was based on import data. And that was just over two years, which is a fairly significant impact. Um, the World Health Organization, the guidelines that, uh, that the World Health Organization issue recommend that, um, that excise account for at least 70 per cent of the retail price. And it's been very challenging for Australia to reach those World Health Organization targets, um, as tobacco manufacturers have taken the opportunity to increase the price of their product at the same time that excise increases, um, which is, um, is, is, is sort of muddying the waters. Um, as reported in the World Health Organization report on the global tobacco e epidemic in 2015, as of mid-2014, uh, uh, since, since when there have been already two more 12.5 uh, per cent excise increases, as well as biannual increases in excise in line with wage inflation, uh, Australia's total taxes applied to cigarettes were the sixth highest among 106 countries who reported to the World Health Organization. Um, and, uh, it also accounted for, um, at this stage, 47.67 per cent of the total retail price of the most popular brand of cigarettes, which were Winfield 20-packs. Goodness me, when did Winfields become the most popular brand? Um, uh, speaking as an ex-smoker, I was actually one of those smokers who gave up when they became pregnant, but I was a passionate. In fact, I think I might have smoked for Australia at one stage. I was very good at it. A carton of Winfield. That's exactly right. I wasn't quite a carton of Winfields. I think I smoked something far more glamorous than that. I was one of the few people, I think, that made smoking look attractive and sexy. Uh, um, uh, thank you. Uh, no, I didn't. It's a, it's a terrible habit. It's a terrible habit. Um, so at that stage, uh, uh, those um, <laughs> those excises accounted for 46, just over 46, seven and a half percent of total retail price of the most popular brand, and gave Australia the seventh highest uh, after-tax cigarette price in the world. Um, Tobacco control in Australia is um, well. Tobacco use is one of the leading causes of preventable disease and premature death in Australia. The ABS uh, data indicates that smoking rates in Australia have dropped to 14.5 per cent among adults, and that was in 2014 and 2015, compared with 16.1 per cent in 2011 and 2012, and 22.3 per cent in 2001. The ABS data also demonstrated that significant gains have been made in, producing, in reducing the prevalence of daily smoking in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people aged 15 and over, which is down to 39 per cent in 2014-15, from, uh, from 45 in 2008 and 49 per cent in 2002. So headway is certainly being made with this particular um, community um, where there is entrenched socio-economic disadvantage. 
Australia has a very broad range of tobacco control measures in place already and has sustained a multifaceted approach over the past several decades, which has helped to achieve the decline in national smoking prevalence. The interventions include uh, excise increases, but also education programs and campaigns, very, very effective ones. Uh, plain packaging, as I have mentioned before, of tobacco products, large graphic health warnings prohibiting tobacco advertising and promotion, um, and providing support for smokers to quit the habit. Ongoing tobacco interventions, including excise increases, are critical to ensuring that the prevalence of smoking in Australia continues to decline. It is incorrect to assume that the rate of reduction in smoking prevalence can be maintained without additional tobacco control efforts. Evidence from Australia and from overseas show that when tobacco control efforts stall, so does the decline in smoking prevalence. So increasing the price of cigarettes via taxation is one of the most effective ways of reducing tobacco consumption and preventing the uptake of smoking. High prices encourage smokers to quit or reduce their consumption, while also discouraging potential smokers, including young Australians, from taking up, up the habit. Uh, I do. <laughs> At the moment, the adult daily smoking rate, I think I said, is 12 and a half, oh, sorry, 14 and a half percent of the population in 2014-2015. Now, uh, this measure, um, increasing the excise on tobacco, will assist the government to make process on the Council of Australian Government's target um, to reduce the adult daily smoking rate to 10 per cent of the population and to halving the daily rate of smoking around, around, uh, among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people by 2018. So that's a target of the Council of Australian Governments. Uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians uh, and people in remote areas, people on the lowest socio-economic status, have all, uh, had, have, all, they all have higher rates of smoking compared to the general population. And although these groups will undoubtedly uh, experience a decline in purchasing power if they keep smoking, uh, they will also receive the income and health benefits from quitting. So this change sits alongside numerous interventions of the that the Commonwealth has taken to reduce the prevalence of smoking, including a comprehensive ban on tobacco advertising and, and promotion, retail display bans, uh, uh, pharmaceutical benefits scheme subsidies for smoking cessation supports and excessive and continuing public education campaigns. And these bills will raise uh, 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 4.59 billion across the forward estimate period. So goods and services tax receipts are estimated to increase by 430 million over that same period. The revenue gained from higher tobacco excise will be used by the government to provide a range of services, but importantly, that range includes health services. It's a very important measure. Uh, it's an important part of the government's com comprehensive tobacco control strategy, which includes investment in anti-social, uh, sorry, anti-smoking social marketing campaigns, uh, subsidies for nicotine replacement therapies, and the introduction of plain packaging for tobacco products. The government announced in the budget that it will strengthen the penalties for illicit tobacco offences and will provide an additional $7.7 .7 million for the tobacco strike team to combat illicit tobacco activity. Um, illicit tobacco is prim primary uh, the primary responsibility for the illicit trade in tobacco rests with, uh, with the uh, DIBP and the Australian Tax Office, the ATO. The DIBP received funding in the 2016-17 budget to tackle illicit trade in tobacco. Currently there is no reliable estimate of the size of the illicit tobacco trade in Australia. The DIBP and the ATO are working to develop a reliable estimate. Now, some commentators suggest that tobacco control interventions such as excise increases and, and, to, and tobacco plain packaging increase this illicit trade. Now, there is no, in fact no reliable evidence that this is the case. 
However, there is international evidence to suggest that illicit tobacco markets, um, market size does tend to be driven more by supply factors, including the cost of supply to market, which is very high in Australia, and also the level of law enforcement activity, the presence of corruption, the likelihood of detection and the scale of penalties. As such, tackling the illicit trade in tobacco should not involve weakening effective tobacco control measures. Rather, it should be addressed by strong enforcement and compliance measures. Australia has a strong and active enforcement regime aimed at combating the illegal trade in tobacco products. And this is made stronger through more, um, the most recent budget allocations to Border Force. Um, the trade in illicit tobacco attracts significant penalties under the Customs Acts of 1901 and the Excise Act of 1901. Tobacco smuggling is punishable by fines and up to 10 years imprisonment. Uh, so public health advocates say that the latest tax hike on cigarettes will cut smoking rates even further from the already steep falls that we've seen in recent years and could even lead to Australia becoming practically smoke-free. Uh, the number of smokers in Australia has dwindled over recent decades, um, and as I said, it was nearly a quarter in the early 1990s, and it's now closer to, to only 13 per cent now. And that's, previous, that's due to previous excise increases and public health measures like smoking, banning smoking in public areas and the plain packaging laws. The chief executive of the Cancer Council of Australia, Sanchi Aranda, said that price is an important factor in people's decision to smoke. Uh, and she said, and I quote, uh, every time you increase the excise, consumption goes down. We anticipate that if there were four of these recurrent tobacco increases over time, that about 320,000 current smokers would attempt and be likely to quit as a result of all four increases, and about 40,000 teenagers would be deterred from taking up smoking. In the longer term, that means tens of thousands of cancer deaths would be prevented, Professor Aranda said. Professor Aranda also said that lung cancer was still the most significant preventable cancer in Australia. But there's a view that, um, that increased tobacco excise punishes those on low incomes. The reality is that tobacco tax increases are particularly effective in prompting people in those lower socioeconomic groups, those most disadvantaged in our society, to quit smoking. And this is very important because disadvantaged groups tend to bear uh, a disproportionately heavy tobacco death and disease burden. There's also a claim that, uh, that increasing tobacco excise would be a tax grab, but what does the community think? It's, uh, it's very hard to imagine any blatant tax grab being popular. Um, however, uh, the news poll research shows that 73 per cent of Australians actually support an increase in tobacco tax or tobacco excise. And that's not just the non-smokers talking. Recently, Quit Victoria research showed that 60 per cent of smokers supported a tobacco tax increase. And why wouldn't they when it can literally save their lives? And the tax grab theory has another major flaw. Increasing tobacco excise is the most effective measure available to governments for reducing the social and economic costs of tobacco use. The World Bank and the World Health Organization say so, as do um, analysis of Australian trends in tobacco consumption um, done in the 1990s. So the health benefits of the tax are, are really what matters. The revenue should be seen as a fortuitous byproduct, generating funds to reinvest in public health. Um, some critics point to the tax increases boosting potentially the tobacco black market. And yes, a tobacco, illegal tobacco is a very serious issue, but this can be addressed and is being addressed in this bill through tighter policing. And ultimately, as policy measures such as increased tobacco excise continue to denormalise smoking in our communities, the market itself will become far less lucrative. So it's the leading cause of death and disability in Australia. If there was any other preventable disease, or any other preventable cause of so many deaths, whether it was infectious disease, whether it would be terrorism, whether it was road trauma, the government would be expected to take action. And this government is taking action. And quite frankly, the Australian people should expect nothing less of us.